Hey everybody, I'm getting ready to test the nitrates in my 125 gallon tank, so I thought I would go over and talk a little bit about how to uh, properly do this test. I've tried it a lot of different ways over the years. I've experimented with things that you can do, things that you don't have to do. Um, the instructions are pretty specific about certain steps you have to take and so on and so forth. And a lot of that stuff is not quite as necessary as they make it sound, but some of it is also very important. So, first thing you need to do is you need to get yourself a vial of water. Now, some people will talk about the meniscus, and I myself have spoken about this in the past when I didn't realize it wasn't quite so critical. But, for argument's sake, the meniscus is, you will see how the, let's see if we can get this on camera there. You'll see there's a little curvature to the water that wants to sort of climb up the sides of the vial. The meniscus is that curvature, and you want the very bottom edge of that curve to be right where that line is. Now, this is not rocket science, so it does not have to be exact. But if you want to be exact, that's how you do it. So that's lesson one that I've learned over the years. Just make sure you're on that line. It does not have to be perfect uh, with that meniscus exactly where it's supposed to be. So as long as you've got basically uh, 5 mil, which is what that line is set to, then you're good to go. So you've got bottles labeled 1 and 2. I have found that it does not matter which order you put them in, but for the sake of keeping track of everything, let's just stick with doing bottle 1 first, and then we can do bottle 2 second. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to put 10 drops in, Now, I have found that if you lose track and you're on drop 8 or 9 and you can't remember, that doesn't really matter either. If you do 9 drops of one and 10 of the other, or 10 of one and 11 of the other, I've still gotten pretty much indistinguishable results from control experiments I've done. So, shoot for 10 drops. If you're not quite sure, you might have missed it by one drop, don't sweat it. Don't worry about it. Um, it says to put the cap on and mix this up thoroughly. I've also found that that's totally unnecessary. You do not need to do that. What you do need to do is take the second bottle and you need to shake this very, very vigorously. There is a, a very fine powder in this liquid that needs to be suspended. It doesn't dissolve into the liquid. It just hangs in solution. And over time, it will settle out to the bottom and it will also cake. So just a little bit of shaking up does not mix it properly. You've got to really, really vigorously shake it. I believe it says uh, 30 seconds on the bottle. And it all depends. When's the last time you used it? Has it been sitting on the shelf for four months? Then I would shake it for 30 seconds. You know, if you used it five minutes ago because you're testing multiple tanks, then you can just give it a good vigorous shake for five or six seconds and you're good to go. In my case, it's been a few days since I've used it, so I'm going to give it a nice good shake. Now, when you start dropping it, it should come out fairly clear. Let's pause for a moment so I can pay attention to counting. Likewise, 10 drops. Now, it should come out clear or possibly looking like it's got a little bit of cloudiness to it. But if it starts to get kind of clogged and stuck and you've really got to sort of squeeze to get it to come out, then you didn't shake it enough. It should come out liquid. Now, once you've put the second drops in, it says that you need to either invert it like this for 30 seconds or you need to shake it vigorously for 30 seconds. I have also found that that's not necessary. Just give it a good mix up or roll it back and forth four or five times. Do that for 10 seconds and you're generally pretty good. You let it set for five minutes and then you come back and check and you can see that's already changing color rapidly. So we're going to have a nice bright red vial in about five minutes. But we're not going to wait that long since we've already got some color in it. We're going to go right into the how you will look at it part. Now, matching that color up, color for color, is you know going to be your guess once you actually get to this point. But the way you do that is you get yourself under some decent high quality light and you hold the vial against, I'm trying to hold this in front of the camera to see where I am here, hold the vial in front of the white strip between the colors. Hold it about a half inch away from the paper, so maybe like a finger's width, put your finger between the paper and the vial, and allow light to pass behind it, and then look at the color of the vial that way. And again, we've got the light sort of behind us, this is not very good camera work, but you know, that's where my washing machine happens to be positioned, so we make do with what we've got. But that's how you do it. You want about a half inch gap between the paper. Do not lay it against the paper. See how much darker that became? 
you don't want to test it like that against the paper. You want to test it out away from the paper so light can move in behind it. And again, eyeball it up as close as you can. It's not going to be an exact color match to any of them. And as I've said a million times, once you get beyond that 20, 30, 40 parts per million and you get into where it's starting to look red, you know, you tell me what the difference between that red and this red is. And then when you get it in the vial, you really can't tell the difference. So again, it puts you in the ballpark. It gives you an idea of where you're sitting. But it's really, really important to shake this vial vigorously. As far as all the other stuff on the instructions, it's not that critical. You know, again, if you want to put the cap on after you put one in and you want to follow the instructions, you know, that's fine or whatever. But if you're skimping on the instructions, do not skimp on the shaking this up. If you don't shake it up properly and you don't get enough of that uh, reagent mixed in with the solution and suspend it in there, you won't get enough of the reagent for a proper reaction and you won't get a proper color. Um, so any questions, any comments, anything like that, let me know. I'll put a link down below. Uh, these are relatively inexpensive or of course you can buy the, I've got some stuff piled on top of it and I don't have to live with it anymore, but you can also buy the master test kit, which gives you pH, uh, ammonia, nitrite and nitrate. Sorry about that. And it allows you to test everything you need to know. Uh, about your nitrogen cycle as well as high and low range pH in that master kit. It's pretty good value. It's like $20 or $22 or something. I'll put a link to that too. Uh, but if you just wanted to buy this test bottle, this is like $8 or $9 uh, for this kit. Again, not expensive. So look down below for those links. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you real soon in the next one.